Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and in this follow along, we're going to take a look at AWS Config. So, AWS Config is a tool that allows you to ensure that your services are configured as expected. So, I've already activated it in my North Virginia region. So, what I'm going to do is just go over to Ohio here uh, because it is per region activated, and I'll go over to Config. And then, what we'll have to do is set it up. So, there is this one click setup. And it did skip me to the review step because it's kind of piggybacking on the configuration of my original one here. But the idea is that you'll just say uh, record all resources in this region or things like that. You'll have to create a service role link if you have not do done so. So this will look a little bit different, but here it's using an existing one. You'll have to choose a bucket so or create a bucket. Uh, it's not super complicated. So you get through there, you hit confirm, and basically you're gonna end up with this. So the inventory um, lets you see all the the resources that, or not all of them, but most resources that are in your AWS account in this particular region. It, this will not populate uh, right away, so you will have to wait a little bit of time for that to appear. One really nice thing are conformance packs. I really love these things. When AWS first brought these out, there was only like a couple, but now they have tons and tons and tons of conformance packs. So you can go deploy a conformance pack and you can open up the templates I just want to show you, look at how many they have. So there's some you might recognize like NIST, uh, CIS, things like that, well-architected uh, stuff. And all these are, um, and I'm not sure if it's easy to open these up, but all these are, if we open them up, they're on GitHub, is these are just cloud permission templates to set up configuration rules. And so there's a variety of suggested rules, uh, like around IAM best practices and things like that, that we can load in. Um, but the idea is that you're just going to create rules. So you go here and you add a rule and they have a bunch of managed rules here um, that we can look at. But I think it might be fun to actually run a, um, a conformance back. I'll just show you what it looks like to add a rule first. So let's say we wanted to do something for S3. Um, and it was making sure that we are blocking public access. So we go next here. Generally, you'll have a trigger type you can choose whether it's uh, configured when it happens or it's periodic. This is disabled in this case here and you just scroll on down. Um, and then once you've added the rule, what you can do is also manage remediation. So if this rule said, hey, this thing is non-compliant, we want you to take a particular action. You have all these AWS actions that you can perform and you can notify the right people to correct it or have it auto-correct if you choose to do so. Um, for rules, you can also make your own custom one. So that's just you providing your own Lambda function. So you're providing that Lambda ARN. And so basically you can have it do anything that you want. Whatever you want to put in a Lambda, you can make AWS config check for. Okay, so it's not super complicated here, but um, uh, this one here is just going to go ahead and check. And so if we go and reevaluate, it might just take some time to show up. So they're going to say that it's compliant or non-compliant. Okay, and I, it should be compliant. But while we're waiting for that to happen, let's just see how hard it is to deploy a conformance pack because I feel like that's something that's really important. Oh, you can just drop them down and choose them. That's great. So we might want to go to IAM here. Oops, Identity and Access Management. And hit Next. And say, uh, my um, uh, IAM best practices. And you might not want to do this because it does have spend. And I want to say spend. It's not going to happen instantly. But the idea is that if you turn this on and forget to remove it, uh, you will see some kind of uh, charges over time because it does check based on the rules. It's not super expensive, but it is something to consider about. Um, but anyway, so it looks like we created that conformance pack. So if I refresh, it looks like it's in progress. I wonder if that's going to set up a CloudFormation template. I'm kind of curious about that. So we'll make our way over to CloudFormation. And it is. So that's really nice because once that is done, what we can do is just tear it down by deleting the stack. So I'm going to go back over to our conformance pack here. Let's take a look here. And so it still says it's in progress, but it is completed and we can click into it. And we can see all the things that it's doing. So it says I'm groups have user check conformance pack. Um, and so it looks like there's a bunch of uh, cool rules uh, here. So what we'll do is we'll just wait a little while and we'll come back here and then just see if um, this updates and see how compliant we are from a, uh, a basic account, okay? All right, so after waiting a little while there, it looks like some of them are being set. So I just gave it a hard refresh here. Uh, and here you can see that it's saying is root account, uh, whoops, <laughs> we'll give it a moment here to refresh. But uh, is the root account MFA applied? Yes, 
Have we done a password policy? No, and actually I never did a po password policy, which is something I forgot to do, but here they're just talking about the minimums and maximums of things that you can do. Okay, so that's a conformance pack. Um, but if we go to rules, actually I guess it's all the rules here. I can't really tell the difference between the conformance pack rules and our plain rules. It kind of, it's kind of all mixed to together here, I think. Yeah, so it's a bit hard to see what's going on there. If we go to the conformance uh, pack and click in again, it might show the rules. Yeah, there we go. So here's the rules there. You're seeing a little bit more information. So use a hardware MFA. So you know how they're talking about using a security key, like what I showed you that I had earlier in the course, things like that. Um, I am password policy, things like that. So, you know, not too complicated, but um, I think I'm all done here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to CloudFormation and tear that on down, but you get the idea. Well, I might wanna show you a drift. So there used to be a way, it's because I keep changing things on me here, but there's a way to see uh, history over time. And so that was something that they used to show. <laughs> And I'm just trying to like find where they put it because it is like somewhere else. Resources maybe? Ah, resource timeline. Okay, so they moved it over into the resource inventory. And so if we were to take a look at something, anything, maybe this here, resource timeline. Um, and there might not be much here, but the idea is it will show you over time how things have changed. So the idea is that not only can you say whether it was config, is something compliant, but when was it compliant? And that is something that is really important to know, okay? So very simple example, maybe not the best, but the idea is that we can see when it was and was not compliant based on uh, changes to our stuff. But uh, anyway, that looks all good to me here. So I'm gonna make my way over to CloudFormation. Actually, I already, I already have it open over here. We're gonna go ahead and delete that stack. Um, termination protection is enabled. You must first uh, disable it. So we'll edit it, disable it, whatever. <laughs> Okay, we'll hit delete there. And as that's deleting, I'm gonna go look for and config my original rule there. Again, I'm not really worried about it. I don't think it's gonna really cost me anything, but uh, I'm also just kind of clear the house here just so you're you're okay as well. And so if we go over to our rules, um, the one that I spun up that was custom, I think was this one here, because these are all grayed out, right? So I can go ahead there, delete that rule, type in delete, and we are good, so there you go. That is it, all right.